Welcome to Living Sustainable Dream, and this is Off Grid Homesteading. Uh, right now, I am setting up the battery bank. This is the second battery bank that my wife and I had. The first one was T105s, and we had 12 of them. So, this is the old battery bank here. Those are 225 amp hour batteries. Uh, they're great batteries. They lasted for seven years. This is be your typical golf cart battery. Batteries are not supposed to bulge at all. That means if they're bulging, bad things are happening. And I don't know if you can see that, but that is some definite curvature on these batteries. I mean, look at this thing. It just kind of wall comes out. So, I mean, you can definitely see some bulping in these batteries. These batteries have literally had it. Um, I had a couple uh, cells go bad and I kind of try to mark them. These are my two batteries with two bad cells in it. They don't even register power anymore so they're not even a six volt battery anymore. They're a four volt battery. So that's what the old system looks like. Uh, we ran these hard it was our first bank. We didn't know what we were doing. We figured, hey, if we're gonna try this, let's go ahead and do it and uh, really mess with them. And we did, but we got seven years out of these things. I'm gonna go ahead and interrupt uh, this video and just kind of talk about the actual cost of the T105 batteries. So when my wife and I first bought the, this battery bank back in 2011, we paid $155 per battery. So to figure out the actual cost, you multiply the amount of batteries that you need, which we needed three strings, which is four batteries per string, for a grand total of 12 batteries. So 12 batteries times $155 equals $1,860. Now this does not include the shipping, and you've gotta keep that in mind if you're ever gonna order a battery bank, it's gonna cost you quite a bit, uh, almost a couple hundred bucks to ship your bank to you. They usually ship it freight. But to find out the true cost of off-grid electricity, because off-grid electricity isn't free, just because you put solar panels on your house does not mean you have free energy. Um, you have that initial setup cost, which was not a big deal to my wife and I, because the cost to pull electricity to our off-grid property was far more expensive than the solar setup with the bank included. But just looking at the, the battery bank, let's look at what it would cost per month. So to find out the true cost of the off-grid electricity that we're using with the battery bank alone, that's not including the gas for the generator um, or maintenance, it is just batteries. At the age of this battery bank, our T105s lasted seven years. So the cost of the battery bank, including shipping, we'll just estimate it around $2,000. You divide that by the age of your battery bank times 12. So we're gonna convert the years to months. So that would be 84 months. You take $2,000, you divide it by the 84 months, which is the price of our battery bank with the shipping, divided by the total months that it survived. And that comes down to about $23.81 per month. And that's me estimating the shipping cost. That is the true cost of the T105 battery. As of 2011, if you look at the price today, uh, same place, 2019, you're gonna be looking at $180 for the same batteries, the exact same batteries that we bought for $155 in 2011. Everything is costing more, and it seems like our dollar is worth so much less. All right, I'm gonna walk you guys through the Surrette battery cost. All right, now to uh, pretty much give an estimation on the Surrette battery cost. Now, I just bought these batteries. I'm hoping you know, I'm very much in hope that it will last 10 years since my T105s, most people get about five years out of those batteries. I got seven out of mine. Some people have boasted 10. I, that's pretty amazing. They must've been, you know, babying those batteries pretty good. But uh, I'm hoping with the same kind of level of care that I put into my T105s, I'll get the top of the Surrette, which is the 10 years. Some people get more than 10 years, but I'm just gonna estimate it 10 years. 
So the cost per battery in 2018 for the Surrett batteries, which is the S550s, the 428 amp hour batteries, is $344 at this time. However, I did not need 12 batteries. I actually took eight batteries and got better, um, I'll just say better power than I had with the T105s with eight batteries. So that saves some money on cost. So you take your eight batteries, you times that by your price of 344 per each battery. And it comes up to about $2,752, and that's not including shipping. Now, to find out the true cost of off-grid electricity for these batteries, I aged the battery, this is my estimation, to 10 years. So if you take 3,000 and you divide it by 120 months, that should equal an electric bill of $25 per month. Now, that's with me using the batteries and then spreading it across the price across... 10 years, 120 months. That's not including the gas to run my generator. That's not including any other type of maintenance. So I'm looking at $25 per month. Just an FYI, if I was on grid in this area and I decided to supplement my home with, um, with solar energy and I was paying an on-grid bill, even if I made all the power and I didn't owe the, the company, the electric company, anything, they would still charge me $25 a month just for a hookup fee. So we have a lot of vacation homes around here. What people do is they vacation, and then when it gets cold, they leave, and they have their home kind of in stasis. They winterize their homes. That home is sitting pretty much dead. No electrical current going through that home at all, and they're still charged $25 a month by the electric company um, as a service to just be hooked to them. So, I mean, you know, it's, you're going to get, you're going to pay for it one way or the other. It just depends on how you want to pay your electric bill. I personally like the off-grid freedom. If the grid does go down, I'm not affected by it. I don't have to wait for linemen to go out there and fix it. However, I've had my own grid go down and then I'm responsible for fixing it, but I can do it in my time frame and when I need to do it. So let's go ahead and continue on with the video and just kind of talk a little bit about it. Just looking at the setup here, if I can get this thing to focus, okay, this is the, the negative terminal. This goes to the inverter right here, okay, on the negative side over here. And then, sorry about the mess of the wires. It's been kind of hellacious getting everything in. Uh, that is the positive connector here, okay, so that is just like a car battery. That would be your positive. The other side was your negative. It goes off, comes out the box here, goes up into the inverter, and connects to the inverter in there. Okay, and that's what's providing power for the house. That's why we have lights on right now. Is the inverter um, is converting it into AC, so it's taking this DC battery bank and converting it to AC. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm going through, and I'm putting these on each of the posts which is a battery corrosion eliminator. It's supposed to eliminate rust and that green stuff that gathers onto your battery, the corrosion. And so I'm putting that on each of the connectors. It's supposed to connect it first and then put it on. I have my battery saver there, which I put on and that kind of does a little bit of a stimulation or kind of like a, uh, a trickle drain on the batteries which is supposed to keep them active and in use even when they're not in use and and just uh, basically just uh, help the batteries to not corrode as fast. Now I'm, I'm told that I can get about seven to ten years on this battery bank which would be great. I got seven on the T105s which is pretty good but I rarely took it down below um, 40% in the winter time and in the summertime I rarely drop below 80% depending on cloudy days. This battery bank you do not want to take it below 50%. You want to keep you know, what I mean by 50% is if I have 20 kilowatts of stored power I can only use 50% of that before I need to charge up the batteries again. Um, I should equalize probably once a month and that means I have actually at my disposal or use only 10 kilowatts of power. But not to worry, with the T105s, I had only eight 
kilowatts of power. That's half of 16. So this is the Surettes. We're hoping they do really well for us. It's going to be a whole lot more power. We should last longer in the winter time. But doesn't that look lovely? Doesn't that just look beautiful compared to the other one? And then if you ask about venting, the vent is down there. And when I put the lid on top, kind of vents underneath and then takes it straight out the mm -hmm. wall there. So those of you that are paranoid about venting and uh, want to yell at me, venting, venting, it's it's in there. It's just off to the side underneath. Mm -hmm. Right in there, you can see it kind of, there's a vent down there. So don't panic, it's vented. I also have a door there in case I need to open it up if I can at the time. I can open it up and air this place out. So no panicky, we're good, right? Okay. Glad my, it's done, man. It's my lovely wife. She helped me lift the 125 pound, well, 122.5 pound batteries. Ready? Gun one, gun two. Yep, she's good. Yeah. All right. Not really.